Simone Coretta is a web architect, developer, and co-author of Owen Succinctly, a title and sync fusion series of free technical ebooks. He is also co-authoring an upcoming title for the Succinctly series on ASP.NET 5. In this video, Simone introduces ASP.NET 5, explains how to work with several of its new features, and outlines the anatomy of a web app built in Visual Studio 2015. Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Simone Chiaretta. I'm a Microsoft MVP and ASP Insider and beginner triathlete. And in the next half hour, I'm going to introduce you to ASP.NET 5, the new web framework from Microsoft. If at the end of the video you still have a question, well, you're welcome to contact me on Twitter at SimoneCH or by visiting my blog at conclimber.net.nz. But let's have a look at the agenda of this video. During the course of the next half hour, we are going to see what is ASP.NET 5, how to get started with ASP.NET 5, which means how to install it. Then we are going to have a look at the command line tools that are now available to handle ASP.NET 5 applications, which are called DNX, DNU and DNVM. We are then going to have a look at Project JSON, which is the new configuration file for ASP.NET 5 application. And later we are going to build first a console application that will run both on Windows and Mac. And then we are going to build a sample web application. And while doing that, we will see which are all the features and components of ASP.NET 5 web application. And finally, we are going to have a look at which server you can use for running ASP.NET 5. Let's start by positioning ASP.NET 5. ASP.NET 5 is not a replacement of ASP.NET 4.6, but it's just an alternative solution that instead of running only on .NET Framework 4.6, runs on top of .NET Core, which in turn allow ASP.NET 5 to run not only on Windows, but also on Mac and Linux. As you can see, on top of ASP.NET 5, you can run a variety of frameworks, including ASP.NET and VC6, but you can run WebForm or ASP.NET and VC5. This less to require ASP.NET 4.6. What is ASP.NET 5? ASP.NET 5 is a complete rewrite of the Microsoft web stack and has been designed with modularity as first pillar. This allows the application that you built to run on high density scenarios like cloud computing without requiring too many uh, resources. Other two important facts are that ASP.NET 5 is completely open source and thanks to the fact that it runs on top of .NET Core, now on the same server different versions of the framework can run side by side and this avoids many of the problems that we had in the past with versioning different versions of the .NET framework. Finally, the architecture of ASP.NET 5 has been deeply influenced by OWIN. If you don't know what OWIN is, you could read the book that me and Dougal Tansi wrote last year. This way we will have an understanding of which is the philosophy that is behind ASP.NET 5. Let's start to get a bit more practical and see how to get started with ASP.NET 5. The first step, of, of course, is installing it. So we have two ways to install ASP.NET 5, an easy way and a more complicated way. The easy way works on Windows and Mac, and it boils down to installing Visual Studio 2015, an edition, Community, Ultimate, Professional, anything, also the free Community Edition. Or on Macintosh, you can install Visual Studio Code. If you install Visual Studio 2015 or Visual Studio Code, you get everything that you need. And then on top of that, you have to install ASP.NET 5, which is a package you can download from the website get.aspnet that works both on Windows and Mac. Let's see, for example, the website, how it is. So if you go to get ASP.NET, you can download ASP.NET 5 RC from Windows or for other operating systems like Windows, OS X and Linux. It also explains you how to install in the most complicated way, which is the command line, which we will see in a second. Installing via command line is a bit more complicated and it requires three steps, at least on Linux, and two on Macintosh and Windows. First, you have to install the .NET version manager called DNVM. And then from the .NET version manager, you have to install the execution runtime DNX. On top of that, if you use Linux, you have to install also LibUV, which is the web server that is used by ASP.NET 5 to run, which is already installed on Windows and Mac. Now that you have installed all the ASP.NET 5 components, let's see what you have actually installed. One of the things that you have actually installed are the three command line tools that comes with ASP.NET 5, which are called DN something. 
So the first is the DNX, which stands for .NET Execution Runtime. What it does is executing your code, actually. So it handles the startup, all the host process. Then you have this DNU, which stands for DNX Utilities. At the end of the day, these utilities are mostly about package management, so downloading components, dependencies, and packaging your own code for third party to use it, like a NuGet. And the last one is DNVM, which stands for DNX Version Manager. This is the thing I've seen in the previous slide, and it was used to install all the ASP.NET 5 things from command line. It also managed multiple versions of the DNX, as you have seen before, all the ASP.NET 5 can run side by side, so you can have multiple versions of the DNX runtime at the same time on your computer. All everything that I've just told you is valid with the current version of uh, ASP.NET 5, or, or better, the version that I'm using to record this webcast, which is ASP.NET 5 RC1. In the month of February, with uh, RC2, all this thing will change a little bit, because they will move all these command line tools to the new command line tools of the new .NET Core. So the syntax will be a bit different, the command and options will be a bit different, but the concept is going to be the same. Now let's try to put everything into practice and build a small command line application that will run on Windows and Mac and it will only use ASP.NET 5 components. To show how to do this, let's switch the command prompt to a text editor. Let's first go to the command prompt and we will use dnvm to install a newer version of the runtime. So dnvm upgrade. We will connect online and try to get the latest version. I already had the latest version which is 1.0 rc1 update 1. And as you can see the command will also put everything in the in the path and will create a default for this version. So if you use dnvm and we try to see all the version that we have, we see that I had been playing with uh, ASP.NET file since a long time, since beta C, but uh, you can see that uh, this uh, highlighted in blue is the default version that we is going to be using every time I every time I use the ASP.NET 5. If we want, we can also use DNVM to change the version that we want to use for the current uh, uh, execution. And to do that, we can use do DNVM use. And we say that, for example, we want to use the core CLR version instead of the CLR version. So we do dash r, which means which stands for uh, runtime. And then we say core CLR. Of course, we never said which version we want to use because in theory we could go back to beta 8. So what we are going to do, we want to use the latest version. So we just copy this. And now if you go again, the NVM list, you will see that the highlighted is the core CLR version instead of the CLR version. Here it is. Let's now build the console application. To start to do that, first we create a folder. So let's call it tech reviews. And inside this folder, we're going to create two files. First, we will create a program.cs file, which will contain the simple application that will run just a, say hello world. And then we're going to create a project.json which will be all the configuration of the file. To do this we are going to use visualstudio.code. So here is the code for the, our console application, which as you can see is very simple and writes just hello from command line. Let's also maybe put exclamation mark. Now let's save it to the folder we just created. So save as program.cs. But for uh, ASP.NET 5 application, there is another file which is very important, which uh, is the 
project.json file. So we create a new file and we write now all the project.json file. So let's save it again where we save the other one. This time it's called project.json. And we will go through all the configuration that you can do with project.json later in the, in the slide. But in a nutshell, here you can, in the project.json file, first you write the metadata, so which is the version of your application, the authors, what the application does. Then there is a section with all the dependencies. In this case, there is nothing because our application doesn't depend on anything. It just depends on the system uh, dot console. And then there is the section with the frameworks. With ASP.NET 5, you can target both the, the runtime, normal standard runtime for the for the dot five dot one, or four dot six dot one, but it's always called the NX four five one for some strange reason. And, and in this case, you don't have to configure any dependencies for the for the runtime because everything is installed already on the machine. While on the other end, if you decide to conf to uh, target your application for the .NET Core. In this case, it's identified by the string DNX score 50. You have to specify which dependencies you want because if you recall, .NET Core is also modular like ASP.NET 5. So in this case, we only need system.core. We will not need a system.xml or system.remoting or any other thing. So we only specify that we need system.console. So now we can save the file. I guess I saved it already before. Now we can switch to the command prompt and launch the DNU utility to restore all the packages. We specified only system.console, but since, but since system.console depends on many other dependencies, as you can see from here, it will download everything and install everything in a, in a system folder, which is this one. Under the user folder, you have .dnx folder, and then you have packages. Inside this folder, you have all the dependencies and packages that you have downloaded. In addition to downloading all the dependencies, the restore operation also created a file which is called project.log.json, which is, as you can see, is a very verbose, this one, and it contains all the dependencies that the system.console has, so, and the, all the dependencies of dependencies. So it's used by the framework to understand how to operate and run the application. So now let's indeed run the application and it's very easy, just do the dnx run and here it goes, we have hello from command line. So that was a demo of running a dnx console application. Now let's switch back to the slides and see better which is the configuration that you can specify inside project.json. Project.json is the file in which you can specify everything that you need to specify for ASP.NET.5 application. So, for example, this is the project.json file that I took from the started kit in Visual Studio 2015. At the top, <coughs> you have the metadata, so you can specify the version of your application, the author, the description as we did before in the, in the command line application, and some other information. Then you have to specify all the dependencies that your application depends on. In the sample we did before, there was nothing. In this file, all ASP.NET applications depend on ASP.NET DLLs. Here I just cut them short because otherwise it will take all the slide. But it's uh, all the ASP.NET uh, uh, MVC DLLs and uh, static files and a lot of other stuff. Then another section that you have to configure is the, the one about the frameworks. We have the standard.NET runtime and the core CLR. In this case, they are both empty. empty. The first one, because everything is already installed if you target the standard.NET framework. The second one is empty because the core CLR dependency that you will need are already part of core dependency from the dependencies of, of your application. So you don't need to specify them again.
Then this is something a bit different that we didn't see before. You can specify additional commands. First, we have seen that to launch an application, you do dnx run. And that launches the main method of the program .cs file. But if you want to do something different, you could add additional command. In this case, there is a command called web. In this case, when you, if you do dnx web, instead of launching the main method of the program .cs file, it will launch the Kestrel web server, which is the new web server that comes with ASP.NET file. And then it will launch a startup method of the web application. Uh, you can specify more. For example, if you include the entity framework inside your project, there will be a new command that, which is called EF that allows you to configure migrations and other stuff. Then you can configure the compilation options. And then at the end, there are some configurations that are only interesting during the build of your application. So the exclude, the public publish exclude, it means that all these applicate all these folders will not be used when building the application the first one and then when publishing the application the second one. And the last one is the scripts section. You can specify many scripts that run when you uh, do something. In this case there is a pre-publish which is used when publishing an application. It will run all this uh, script. So we'll, fir we'll first install everything that is um, configured in NPM, then so most likely Gulp and Bower. Then we will install all the components that are referenced via Bower. And then we will launch the Gulp task that will clean the application and all the artifacts. And then we will launch the minification process. And now before going into the ASP.NET 5 demo, Let's have a look at the pipeline of an ASP.NET 5 application and which are the main features introduced with ASP.NET 5. First of all, we have to remember that ASP.NET 5 is deeply inspired by OWIN. Actually, it's OWIN with just small modification and it's totally compatible with OWIN. And as with OWIN, an ASP.NET 5 application starts with a startup class. In this startup class, we have the constructor in which configuration is read, uh, logging is configured, uh, the environment are read, understood, and all the startup code is, is ran. Then inside this startup class, there are two methods. One which is called configure, exactly like OWIN, where you configure all the middleware that uh, will be running inside the pipeline of ASP.NET 5, of your ASP.NET 5 application. And then there is the configure services method, in which all the services that will be used by your application are configured and then they will be later injected by dependency injection in all the controllers and methods and middleware that you will have through the pipeline of your ASP.NET 5 application. Four important features that are very different from the previous version of ASP.NET 5 are configuration, logging, dependency injection and the environments. Let's have a brief look at what they are. So for what regards configuration, in ASP.NET before version 5, there was only one option, the web config file, in which you could specify via XML all the configuration you want. If you wanted something more complicated, like a database or JSON file, you had to build it yourself. With ASP.NET 5, there is a configuration builder that can be configured, and there are many providers out of the box. Of course, you have XML, but you also have JSON, environmental variable that can be set via the command line or that if you run on Azure can be configured via the panel. And also there is a provider that reads configuration specified in the command line when you start the application. Then logging. Before with logging you had to use third party applications. With ASP.NET 5 there is a default logging provider. And most importantly then we have dependency injection. Before we had to use a lot of different third party dependency injection framework and not everything was injectable. With the ASP.NET 5 everything is dependency injection aware. So every controller, every middleware, every component of your application can receive the services via dependency injection. And finally, there is a standard way of dealing with the environment. So, you know, if your application is running in production, in staging, in pre-production, in development, and based on this information your application can be completely different. So, now it's time for the demo, so let's switch to Visual Studio 2015. We're now go going to create a new project. Create a new ASP.NET web application. And we create an empty application. 
because we don't want all the libraries that comes with the full web application which contains also MVC and web API. So let's start with an empty application. And here you have the new application. As you can see, when you start and create a new application, you have all the information that you need to ex expand the application. The readme file is the same as when you create a full application, so it covers everything that you need. But uh, let's see what is the startup class, because that's what we have seen before. So The startup class contains uh, the method we've seen before, it contains a, a configure method, which con which in this case just says that the application, since it doesn't use any library, just render a hello world string as a text file. And then we have the configure services, which at the moment it's empty. Let's also have a look at the project JSON file. The project JSON file is very simple and it has basically only the dependency on the Kestrel, which is the web server, and AIS platform handler, which is the model that allows uh, an ASP.NET 5 application to interact with IIS. Also, let's have a look, a quick look at the tree of the application. So we have uh, the startup class in the root folder, then we have the double dub dub root, which is where all the static file will reside. And then we have the references, which are, since our application targets both ASP.NET 4.6 and .NET Core, we have all the dependencies installed here. And within the two runtime, we have the different library that depend. And then, of course, all the sub dependencies. One thing that we haven't seen when the application has been created is the restore message. On top of the solution explorer, here on top, there will be a yellow message box which says that we are restoring the dependencies. But in this case, the solution explorer was, was closed, so we will see later when I create a new feature. But if you look at the output window, you see that when you created the application, it uh, looked at all the package and restored all the files and, and created the project.lock.json. Let's now run the application and see what happens. So if we press run with IIS Express, the application builds and opens uh, Chrome or your browser and runs. So here we have Hello World. This is just a simple st string, so no HTML file or anything. But now let's get a bit more fancy and try to do something more complicated. So let's the first show one of the features that I've sh shown before on the slide, which is the configuration file. So let's close project.json and add some code to the, our startup method. So first let's add the uh, constructor of the startup class and some properties. So, so we created the, a, a property that we call t which we contains the configuration of the of our application, and then inside the constructor we, we first create the configuration builder, which is a new feature of the, of the ASP.NET five, and we said that we want to add the X configuration the JSON file, which is called app settings.json, and then on top of that we add just uh, for the sake of it with the, the environment variable. So if you specify an environment variable, it will either override what is being written in the app settings.json or we add a new property to the application settings. And then we save the configuration in our configuration uh, property that we just created. But let's also use this configuration. So what we're going to do instead of saying hello world, we will configure to whom to say hello. So let's add and we write configuration and how do we access the configuration setting so we just it's just a, a key value pair like uh, before so we create and inside this it's a 
we'll see later how we call it. So let's now create the actual application setting file. So we go in this solution explorer again and we create a new file. And we call it app setting. So let's search for configuration, asmet configuration file, and it's called app setting.json. So then let's add the app setting. It starts by default uh, with the configuration for uh, entity framework, but we're going to create it. So as you can see, it's a JSON file with hierarchical information. In this case, it's three, but it can be either one or, or four or a list of configurations. In our case, we're going to keep this three level configuration and we're going to call it greeting name and full name. And instead of this configuration of the database, we are going to add our name. So in this case, let's say, we will say hello tech reviews. So we go back to our startup class and we say here, greeting, name and full name. So we save, we launch again. And now the web browser will open and then we will see that it will say hello tech reviews. So that's it. But this sample is not very useful because nobody is going to write uh, the content or response all in line like, like we have just done. So let's now add the static file handler. So um, because uh, most application also together with the application code, they also have static files. So to do that, we have to do a few things. First, we have to add to the project.json file the library and to handle that. So let's go back to the application JSON file. And here we add that we want to add the new dependencies. So we have uh, this intelligent that helps us to choose what we want to add. So we want Microsoft ASP.NET like and static files. And we also want the latest version which is RC1 final. So let's save. Now let's open the solution explorer so that you can see that this uh, yellow pop-up happens. So let's pin it, pin it. Now if I save here on, on the top of the solution explorer, you'll see that it becomes a package restoring and it will show that the is downloading the, this the new static file library. In this case, yeah, it's created again a project.json file, and it I already connect downloaded before, so it won't show it. But it connects to the to the NuGet and it downloads everything that you need. But now, if you go to startup CS, we can configure this static file folder. So before this final thing, we just say that we want the application to use static files. Of course, now that we we have to show, we have to add some static file. And where do we add it? We add it in the side, inside this dot, dot, dot root file folder. So we create a new file HTML file 
we created just an HTML file we can call the index.html so HTML and we call it index.html and then we just write uh, again hello world but in an h1 So we go back to the startup class. But in this case, it, it won't start by default with the index.html file because we didn't specify that we want to use the default files. So we also have to add that we want to use app, use default files. This means that it's, it's going to use by default index.html or any default file you can specify in the parameter. So now let's save, launch again IIS. And here we have, we will see that we are going to open now this HTML version of the Hello Tech Review. You can notice that it's an HTML because it's formatted with a different font. And if you do a few page shorts, you see it's the full HTML that we just wrote before. Let's now see how we can uh, debug and get some information on, on our application. So one of the features that comes with ASP.NET 5 is that uh, we have a full set of diagnostic uh, middleware. So to add them, we just go to project.json file again. And we add another library, which is called microsoft.aspnet.diagnostic. So let's find it again using this autocomplete. So microsoft.aspnet.diagnostics. And again, final version. Now we can save. You will see that the package restore is in progress. And if you look at the output window, you see it's going to download the NuGet file with ASP Diagnostics and install it again. So now we can go to the startup file and add, for example, we might we want we might want to add a runtime information, which is which is very useful because it shows you all the information of your application, so all the libraries and uh, and the version and uh, of, of runtime. And we will also add the exception page, which in ASP.NET 5, as you will going to see in a second, is a bit more elaborate than, it, than the yellow page of that, of that, of uh, ASP.NET, uh, before version 5 so but of course uh, since this page is so simple it will never create an error use except no no it is a special ember but use developer exception page since the application is so simple it will not generate an error we just just add a condition that said that if we specify a parameter in the query string it will create an error so let's do it again but just delete the default file otherwise it will launch the html application and will never reach this part of the code so if you launch it we will see again this small hello tech word written as a text but so no no error here but if we specify the other part which is true equal true and we add the common question mark otherwise it's not a parameter it's going to create to raise an error so and this is the new developer exception error which shows all the stack trace where the error was thrown the query which said true was true 
all the cookies in this case, no cookies, and the header of the application. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? But let's see also the other uh, runtime information page that we just seen. The, by default, it's called runtime info. So runtime info, and it will show which is your operating system, which version of the runtime, in this case, which uh, version of the execution runtime DNX it's running on, the architecture, the runtime type, in this case it's CLR, it could have been core CLR, and then all the packages that are loaded, and at the bottom of which you will see that uh, your application is running as well. But here it shows all the dependencies that we've seen before in the the project.json file and all their sub dependencies. But now let's add a bit more to this. Obviously you don't want this, this runtime information available when you're running in production. Neither you want the detailed error page. So let's see how we to deal with different environments. So first of all, we say that we don't want <coughs> this to always happen, but we want it to happen only when it's development. So to do this, we have to add to the configuration for to the configuration method another parameter, which is i environment i hosting environment, and we call it env. Then we say we don't want this thing always, but we only want when it's in development. So we do a env dot is development and if it's development we are going to show this thing if it's not development we add that we want to use the standard error page which is app dot use exception handler And then here we specify which is the new the, the file that will be shown when there is an error. And in this case, we're just going to use a, a, a simple HTML error page, which we call error.html. And then we add this error file. So it's at dub 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 the root. So add new item. And we call it error.html. And here we write error as occurred. So we launch again our browser. And we raise the error. And we are going to st still see this. But if we now stop and decide to change to the uh, another environment, which is not the developer anymore, but it's the production one, for example, we have to do it uh, via Visual Studio in this way. So we go to the properties of, of the application. And then in the in the debug windows, we specify that we want to use hosting environment. We want production. So we save. We launch again, and we go to the browser. We reload this up this error page, and here we should see this error as a cure because now we are running in production. We are not running in development anymore. We have the same property page. We can also specify that we want to run on a different server. So let's go back and see. So here we have various profile, and one is IIS Express, but we can also decide to run the web our application on other. So in this case, using the web command that is specified in the project.json, 
is going to use Kest Kestrel, which is the new uh, web server written on purpose for ASP.NET 5. So if we run, we can switch to another, to the other command and say web. We can run. In this case, it won't open by default uh, the browser. It will just open a console line and it will run DNX web, which will then op create a, a web server listening on localhost 5000. So to open it, we have to go back to the browser and manually specify that we want to run on localhost 5000. So localhost 5000 and we will see as before the LTech reviews. Now that we have the console open, we can add some other nice feature to our application, which is logging and console dumping of the log. So let's close this uh, command line. Let's keep the browser open. But let's add some more information. So first, we add the, the dependencies to the login files. And so we just paste everything, save. Our packages will be restored and the, the new project with JSON lock, lock will be created. Again. And now we go to the startup file and specify some more things. First of all, as I've explained in the in the slide, there is a new login library inside uh, ESPN5. And to do that, uh, and to use it, we have to just pass it as parameter to our configuration. So in this case, it's iLogging factory. Of course, it's not referenced in the using, so we just add this Microsoft extension logging also to the using of our application. Then, now that we have the logger factory, we also have to create uh, the actual logger class. We do that inside our application code when the response is handled, and we just log something. In addition to that, we can also specify which is the minimum information level that is going to be logged. If we want to log everything, we just specify that we want to use the minimum logging level as verbose. So we just save, and now we have to finally add the, the log. So we write logger dot log, for example, information. And we say request execution started. So now we run again the web command, which will open the console application. And here you will see that on top of what you have seen before, there are some more information written on the console because we configured the verbos login. So here we will see that the my hosting has started, or hosting has, has uh, started. And then if we reload the, 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 the page, we are going to see that in this logging information we have, we have all the information we need to try to trace uh, what happened. So all the information about uh, the URL that has been launched, the fact that the, the static file middleware didn't see any static file, uh, request execution started, which is our log, as you can see from log zero, because we didn't specify any name for the logging, uh, while the other always specified which was the file that was logging. And then it's uh, funny to see, but it uh, shows that the browser also requested the five icon on that icon, which was not existing. So it just rendered the game tech, uh, hello tech reviews as file, but it's not a real five icon file. Okay, and then let's stop the command line and you see that uh, it's uh, shutting down. And uh, that was a short demo of how to create an ASP.NET 5 application using Visual Studio. As you've just seen, in ASP.NET you can run an application using variety of servers. The first is IIS, and it runs ASP.NET 5 on top of IIS, as we've seen before with, on IIS Express. 
and we could use the web listener which is basically the same but it's used for self-hosting uh, your web server so if you want to start uh, your own web server from your own application from your own uh, windows service from your own command line you could use that and then finally you can use kestrel which is the web server the new web server from mac that runs also on mac and it's based on libuv so our journey on asp.net 5 is over so let's have a quick review of what we have seen so we have seen what is asp.net 5 how it uh, stacks up with the other component of the framework <clears throat> how to install it which are the command line tools that you can use and remember this is rc1 in rc2 the name will change to .NET instead of DNX and DNU and DNVM. And then finally we have learned how to create a simple common line application and also a simple ASP.NET 5 application just using the basic of ASP.NET 5. Remember that if you want to use MVC of Web API, you have to install all the other libraries that you need and specify them as middleware in addition to what we have done before. So I hope you enjoyed this time with me. And I remember, my name is Simone Chioretta, I'm Microsoft MVP and ASP Insider and a Sync Fusion author. And if you have questions about what you've just seen, you can contact me on Twitter at SimoneCH or read my codeclimber.net.nz blog. To learn more about the free succinctly series of technical ebooks, please visit syncfusion.com slash ebooks. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to take the related quiz to earn Microsoft Tech Rewards points.